Hi everybody, this is Dr. Charlton again. I wanted to talk to you about slides. So we are following a specific format for our slide presentation. We're, um, so first of all, I'm gonna give you a scenario. Let's say, so right here I have a TED Talk slide. This is a really cool slide for a TED Talk, right? I mean, he's making some points, he's making some arguments, and then he has a slide that says actually 8%. I don't really know the context here, and I'm assuming you don't either. Maybe some of you do. Maybe some of you are familiar with this presentation. But you can imagine if this presenter was not available and you had to interpret his slides, you could maybe figure some of it out. But I'll bet you a lot of it would be uninterpretable. And so it doesn't really stand alone at all. That's not a problem with this slide. This is actually a really good slide for the situation. Now, we're not doing this type of slides because we're doing something completely different. We have a client project. We're going to give our client slides that are like a report. These slides stand alone. If the presenter is not there, they can still read and understand. So I've given you guidelines in the little booklet, um, the guide to working with clients. So you're welcome to check that out. I'm also gonna go into the, a lot of the same things I talk about there and, and kind of look at some examples. So that doesn't, the book doesn't include much in the way of examples. It encourages you to Google um, search for consulting slides. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so I did a search for BCG presentations. BCG is a big consulting com company, Boston Consulting Group. They're pretty big time. and. These are just examples of some of the slide presentations they have. So I took a quick look and just picked out a couple of kind of random ones. And I'm gonna go through those right now so that you can get an idea for how you could maybe do your slides. Now, before I get into this, just a little uh, caveat or clarification that you don't have to do what I'm doing. The rule is, they need to be, they need to stand on their own. They need to be interpretable, easily interpretable without a presenter, okay? So look at a, a, a variety of slides from different consulting companies, BCG, McKinsey, whatever consulting company is your favorite or that you wanna look at, look at the slides, see how they do it, and then kind of template off of that. If you can find a presentation that you really like, you can kind of just template off of it and Put together a really good package so i'm gonna get right into it i picked a couple here i have them open right here I have one about luxury consumer insights um this is a report this is the fourth edition of this report you note that it is a slide deck but it's also a report okay so um they have they talk here about you know how the data was collected just a quick overview which is nice but what I wanna focus on is the actual slides that make the actual arguments. So let me zoom Let me zoom in here a little bit. Let's see if I can do that without too much trouble. Okay, here we go. Um, all right, so this slide, I want you to notice the titles. The titles are very descriptive and they're, they do not use neutral language. They make an argument. That's what consulting slides do, right? So they make, they tell you what you're supposed to find when you look at the rest of the slide. We push to be relevant on the highest segments of the luxury consumers. Okay, so the highest segments you see, here's the highest segment they spend over 100. I don't even know what these units are, unfortunately. Um, I think this is some kind of Chinese currency. I'm not sure. So I apologize. But Basically, the luxury ones are over 100 of these, 100 and um, maybe yen, yuan, I don't know. And the next category is between 50 and 100. These are the categories they're focused on. Um, they're pushing to be relevant to this uh, category. And so then you can see when you look at your actual um, slide, you can see the data matches up to the title and it makes the case so that they make the argument in the title and then the slide shows it. So there's another thing that people do. So it's very common for undergraduate students and for just people in general to do something like this as the slide title. So the slide title is true luxury consumer sample distribution. Now, 
that could be a great slide title if you're there to like explain it and walk people through the chart and what we should see. I mean, it's decent, it's not great. But if this is in the hands of the client, you need to like spoon feed this to them. So tell them in the title exactly what you want them to find and highlight the area that you're most interested in, okay? So they've done that. The other thing I want you to notice on uh, consulting slides is the footnotes. They're heavily, heavily documented because you want people to know where you got this data. You don't want people to think that you just kind of made it up or maybe the data isn't reliable. You want all of your sources and information down here in the footnotes, okay? So this is a typical consulting slide. I just want you to recognize that and um, follow that. Let's go to the next one. And you know, the thing I wanna point out too though is these visualizations, this data visualization is cool, like super cool, but it's also horrendous, okay? Because it's really difficult to follow this and interpret that. I encourage you all, when it comes to data visualization, refer back to my presentation that I did in one of the earlier preps on data visualization and keep it simple. Do a clean bar chart. Don't do this crazy complicated stuff because it might wow the client, but they might not be able to read it. And so it's, you know, a lot of, and so for this class, um, you know, this is not smoke and mirrors. We need to make something that is like easily useful to the client where they can read it and say like, oh, okay, I know what that means. This stuff though, this chart. Okay, so let's look at the title. Is it neutral language? No, it says we set higher thresholds by category versus previous edition to identify a true luxury consumer. So they're saying exactly what they did and, and they're, you know, given the whole explanation in the title. Um, they could take it a step further. They're not really saying there what the finding is in this slide. Um, and maybe there isn't a finding. Maybe this is just more of a descriptive slide where they say what is present. Sometimes you'll have a descriptive slide. Um, but anyway, I'm going to skip down. Some of these are kind of introductory. So I'm going to skip down to one of their more, um, like built in, baked into the presentation slides. So this is, this is a better example. I really like this. Um, the global luxury market worth 860 billion of these currency units in 2016, experiential growing faster than personal luxury. Okay, so you can see the growth chart. So they're talking about growth. They're saying what you should find in it. Um, they're saying that it grows faster than personal luxury. So you see experiential um, is growing faster than personal luxury. Now, this is not the way to show, they're using a stacked bar chart. So this is actually not a good data practice because if you're using, if you wanna show, um, is it, hold on. <laughs> if you want to show that two, uh, two trends are different over time, the only way to do that is with a line, a line graph. So, for example, this would, so I have, um, I'm going to show you this in a second. Personal versus experiential. So I have a line chart here. Apologize, it's very sunny here my, in my basement where, where my office is. Oh my gosh. But you can see, you can see the lines diverging between personal and experiential. If you do a stack bar chart, it can be really hard to detect the differences. So do a line chart. So again, refer back to uh, our visualizing data um, prep that was earlier. That's gonna really help you uh, to make the good uh, data graphics. Um, but having said that, I mean, these do look cool. So maybe that's what they're going for. Again, heavily annotated in the footnotes to explain all the details they couldn't get into their charts. Um, so it's, it's pretty good. Again, don't look at the data visualization or the, because it's not as good as what it could be if you follow the method we're, we're doing in the class. But, you know, you have a title that makes a case. It makes an argument. It's like, 
this is what you're going to find. And, you know, this is the finding, the conclusion from this data. Okay. So I'm going to look at another quick example. I'm going to, this has a lot of introductory, introductory material. I would encourage you to have some introductory material, but you don't have to go all overboard like these, these guys do. This is really thorough. This is for a longer report. We're doing a shorter report. So rather than having all this stuff, you could just do like a paragraph executive summary for a first slide or, you know, just something, just keep it simple, I guess, is my point. This is very typical in consulting slides to have a situation where you have a title and a subtitle. Typically, the title will be something attention grabbing, something cute, and then the subtitle will explain what is, what is really the finding in the slide, okay? Creativity and culture, one part of the offer. Focus dash focus of this work. So that's, I guess, attention getting. I don't completely understand it. So you see that that one section there is highlighted, creative and cultural. But that's very typical for a consulting slide. You want something attention getting that maybe only the client will really understand. But then the subtitle really explains what everybody should get out of this chart. So Melbourne's offering is broad, covering five sectors. Um, so anyway, you can use the title and the subtitle. I've seen them used in a lot of different ways. The typical way is title is the attention grabber, and then the subtitle really explains everything that you're going to get out of this uh, out of this slide, the finding. And again, they're not using neutral language. Melbourne's offering is broad, covering five sectors. You know, they could have used neutral language. They could have said instead of that, they could have said um, sectors of Melbourne's offering. So we don't know that it's broad, you know, they're not, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just neutral language. Um, and creative industry is increasingly important to the economy. So again, you're making an argument here and then you're showing data to support it. Workers in the cultural and creative economies generate slightly more DVA than the average Victorian worker. So let's see, let's compare um, cultural and creative economy. Where is that? Cultural creative economy. This is a really complex data visualization. This could be made much simpler. I think it would be fun to redo some of these in you know, the format that we kind of trained on. But the argument they're making is um, creative and the cultural, it's in the subtitle, it's usually in the subtitle. Cultural and creative economy generates slightly more GVA than the average Victorian worker. Okay, so cultural, so cultural and creative is over here. Yeah. So again, this is this is really hard to follow. <laughs> I don't recommend doing the data visualizations the way they do it. I assume that they know better and they just do this because they're trying to wow their clients with their complex uh, data, but we're not trying to do that. We're not doing smoke and mirrors. What I want you to emulate is not how they visualize data, but how they um, how they make an argument in the title, how the slide is self-contained. It has all the footnotes with all the sources and everything like that. So I, I would say just ignore how they visualize data. You don't need to do anything crazy like this. Um, you could there's much simpler ways to visualize this kind of thing. Um, yeah, this visualization is okay. Um, but their point is Melbourne's seen as a cultural and creative city. Um, and, you know, they have the data here to show it. But anyway, I guess my point is it's self-contained. Here's a good example. So creative, ex I really like that they used a bar chart. Thank you for the bar chart. You notice when it has a bar chart, it's like we easily understand bar charts and line charts. It's like, okay, now I know what you're talking about. Some of these other charts are just so complex. Creative experiences are one of the top three reasons people visit. This is true for both international and Australian visitors, subtitle. So they get everything in the title, between the title and the subtitle. You can't just have like a two line title, right? So they break it out. 
usually the subtitle includes more context, more explanation. And then you see the charts there of Australian versus internationals. They have it highlighted in orange so that you know which one's Australian and which one's international. And then they've highlighted the creative section, which is what they're really interested in, right? And they show that, you know, the creative is really driving a lot of the visits. And this is a very clean visualization that I really like. And I would like to see, you know, this kind of thing. It could probably be improved, um, honestly, but it's pretty good as it is. It's very easily interpretable. The slide makes an argument in the title. So again, let me give you an example of a slide that would not make an argument. So you could use neutral language in this, which is would be wrong, which would be terrible. And you could say, um, you could have a title that kind of says like, primary reasons for visiting Melbourne. You know, and then you're not really making your argument about creative experiences, and it's not really clear what I should discover from this chart. You know, it's just the primary reasons. So it's just descriptive title. It's a descriptive title, it's neutral. You're not making any kind of argument. So your slides, especially when you have data, all of our slides won't have data because we're doing a lot of creative type products for our client, but the ones that do have data, and the ones that are making some kind of argument for something should make the argument in the title and detailed footnotes saying where you, where this data came from and any additional components of the analyses that might be left out. Okay, so I've shown you a couple of BCG uh, consulting slide decks. Um, don't be, don't be, I guess like swayed by the complicated data visualizations they use. Number one, they're not that effective. They're confusing and they're probably done to kind of wow their clients. We don't need to wow our clients. We need to be clear with our clients. So we're not doing smoke and mirrors. We're doing clean, simple data visualizations. So again, check out my earlier prep that talks about data visualization. Um, and you know what I want you to take away from consulting slides is two things, you know, the titles and subtitles, I guess that's one thing um, together, you know, the titles. And then number two is the footnotes and just see how everything is self-contained. This is a report, it's not just a typical slide deck. So this is self-contained. So imagine a situation where you're not there to present your slides to the client because there's some kind of uh, virus, you know, quarantine type thing, for example, just a random example. I'm just going to float out there or perhaps um, you brief it to your client, but they're not the decision maker and they have to take it to somebody else who takes it to somebody else. Eventually it ends up in a boardroom where a bunch of people who've never met you decide on this based on your slide deck. So it needs to be built like a report, just like this. All right. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions about it, let me know. But again, there's no perfect, there's no, there's no like, exact template look at a bunch of different consulting you know group slides pick how you want to do it and do it your way just make sure it's self-contained that's the only requirement it needs to be self-contained needs to be clear what um you know everything that's going on in the slides even if the presenter is not there the best way to do that is to avoid neutral language don't have an overview don't put overview in the title don't uh, put, um, you know, just make sure every title makes an argument. Um, you know, revenue year over year is down. You know, that's an argument. That's something you put in the title. Then somebody looks at the slide, they know what they're supposed to learn. Okay. So, um, that's about all I have about that. Again, let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you later.